Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about designer totes, specifically Louis Vuitton Neverfull alternatives from 10 different designer brands. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and keep watching. My name is Rachel. This is my YouTube channel, Rachel Went Shopping. If you love fashion, handbags, luxury brands, then you might want to check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. So today's video is all about Neverfull alternatives. As you guys are aware, there are many different types of tote bags. You've got north-south totes, east-west totes, work totes that are more structured and organized on the inside, market totes, travel totes, lots of different types of totes, and they all serve different purposes. The Neverfull specifically is an east-west tote which means that it is more wide than it is tall. The MM and the GM specifically are the most popular sizes. The MM is 12.6 inches across and 11.4 inches high. The GM is 15.7 inches across and 13 inches high. The Neverfull is a completely wide open tote. It has no zipper closure but it does come with a zipped pouch attached that you can remove. The Neverfull has two shoulder straps that fit comfortably under your shoulder and it can actually hold up to 200 pounds hence the name never full because you can stuff it full of tons of things so today I'm going to be talking about totes that are similar in shape, size, and function to the Neverfull specifically. So one of the popular complaints about the Neverfull is that everybody has it. And if you're looking to be different and not have a bag similar to everybody else, this is the video for you. A lot of people say that the Neverfull is basic, that everybody has it. I'm guilty of saying that myself. So that is why I wanted to give you guys more options. I have right here my only never full. This is a GM special edition collaboration with Murakami that came out in 2007. As you can see, it is gigantic. I myself prefer Neverfulls in special editions, whether it's a collection or a collaboration. I think that adds a little more uniqueness to the bag, and we'll talk about that more at the end of the video. If you guys previously watched my Game On unboxing, if you haven't yet, I'll link it above, you will know that I did purchase the black Game On version in the MM size. I did end up returning that bag though because it did have some quality issues as well as the fact that I didn't need four bags from that collection. So currently this one right here is the only one that I have. I do have one more on my wish list that I am considering getting in the future that I really regret not buying, which is the Steven Sprouse collaboration from 2009 with the neon graffiti on it. So maybe one day I will add that to my collection. Okay, let's get into this list, which I'm going to do my best to price from high to low. Just for reference, the Neverfull P PM currently retails for $1,460. The MM retails for $1,540. And the GM retails for $1,620. So the first tote bag I have on this list is the Bottega Veneta Acro Tote in medium size. It has three rows of interwoven leather. It just looks so unique and true to Bottega. Super high quality materials and construction, exactly what you would expect from a luxurious Bottega leather. This bag is pretty big. The size is very relatable to the GM size Neverfull. I really love the exaggerated woven leather which is very true to Daniel Lee who sort of took that traditional Bottega technique and blew it up and made it even bigger which I think is super cool and visually appealing. I think in this case the bag is expensive but the price is justified because it is made of fully leather in comparison the Louis Vuitton Vuitton Neverfull is made of canvas. You also have this very unique and more difficult construction of interweaving the leather. Next on my list is the Park XL tote bag from The Row. This retails for $2,400. This tote bag has a very slouchy, oversized look, very reminiscent of my memories of the Olsen twins in childhood carrying these huge slouchy bags that were essentially bigger than themselves. This bag is made of calf leather and it has tiny, 
branding just says the row right in the middle there in gold stamping. I think this bag is very clean, understated luxury, but it is very expensive at that $2,400 price point. And I think you'll see why that is expensive once we get to the Saint Laurent tote on this list, which is quite similar for a lot less money. Third on my list, I have Celine. This is the medium kibas phantom tote in soft grained calfskin for $1,950. Now I will admit when I first saw this, it was giving me more north south tote vibes but when I saw it on body it is definitely wider than it appears in some of the images it again has that more big slouchy leather tote vibe it has the word phantom in the name which is sort of those side wings that you're used to seeing from Celine which are on this tote and give it that wider look this bag is 11 inches high and 14 inches wide so it is more relatable in size to the MM Neverfull Celine is known for their beautiful supple leathers and their modest branding. This bag has an inner zip pocket and double flat pockets, but it does not include a removable pouch like the Neverfull. There's also a functioning belt tie at the front, which I'm not really sure how you would use. It is functioning, but I'm not sure that that would really have much of a purpose. For a simple leather bag, this one is $450 cheaper than the row one that we just discussed, but it is still a high price point at just below 2000. So all of these bags we've discussed so far are fully made of leather which is different from the Neverfull that is made of canvas so that is why they have higher price points. Next I want to get into Goyard which is also made of canvas so it is much more similar to the Neverfull in material. Okay everybody of course the second I sat down to film this my neighbor started cutting his lawn so I really hope there's no background noise. Forgive me if there is. The next bag on this list is Goyard. Specifically the San Luis tote but I do have a couple other honorable mentions which are the Artois I hope I'm saying that right and the Anjou again I apologize for butchering those names so the San Luito is the most common comparison to the Neverfull I would say Goyard itself was actually founded in 1853 one year before Louis Vuitton and I'm pretty sure the San Luito came out well before the Neverfull but I am not sure the exact year I could not find a published date for that the San Luito comes in two sizes the PM and the GM so the GM version is approximately 15.7 inches across and 13.4 inches high. This is almost exactly the same size as the GM Neverfull. The PM size is 13.4 inches across and 11 inches high, and this is almost exactly the size of the MM Neverfull. The pricing for Goyard is unique in that certain colors have different prices. So the classic colors, which are black with black trim or black with cognac trim, are a different price than the special colors, which are basically all of the other colors. Goyard also does not retail online and the prices are not readily available. You have to shop the stores often or call to get prices. As of the last published prices I could find, the PM started at $1,285 for the classic colors and $1,605 for the special colors. The GM in classic colors was $1,495 US dollars and in special colors it was $1,870 US dollars. Similar to the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, the Goyard Saint Louis tote is not made of leather. It is made of the supple Goyardine canvas material. Goyardine canvas is a natural coated cloth mixing hemp, linen, and cotton. Though it was originally hand painted, the current process requires a ground color application followed by three successive layers of color etching that create its trademarked slightly raised pattern. The bag is super lightweight and it also includes a pouch similarly to the Neverfull. It is a little more flimsy and less structured than the Neverfull. It was originally created to be a beach bag that you would actually turn inside out when you had wet clothes. You would put the wet clothes in the Goyardine part so as to not ruin the cotton canvas interior. It was actually not meant to be carrying heavy things long term like the Neverfull. So a few common complaints about the San Luis tote is that the corners rip out or the canvas tears because people are carrying all of their work stuff in it and it's just not built to hold that much weight. So that is why Goyard released 
two alternative options that are a little more expensive. The Artois Tote is an even more structured version of the Saint Louis. It has a zipper closure at the top and overstitched leather corners for more support for carrying heavier items. It also has a large inner floating pocket. This bag comes in both a PM and MM size. I will throw the pricing and the measurements up on the screen. As I mentioned, it is not easy to get consistent Goyard pricing. You have to call the boutique if you're interested in any of these styles. But last time I checked, I believe these bags started at $1,800 and went up to $2,500-ish. So it is quite a bit more than the Saint Louis tote. Last but not least, the third version is the Anjou. Uh, again, I apologize for butchering that. This comes in both a PM and GM size, similar to the Saint Louis, except that this does come with full calfskin leather lining. It is reversible, so it does give you the option to wear it both ways. You can either show the Goyardine or the calfskin leather. Two completely different looks, kind of a two-in-one tote, which is pretty cool. I will throw all the info up on the screen that I can find. I believe the prices for this bag do start at $2,200 and go up to around $3,400, so it's definitely the most expensive of the three. Next on this list is the Balenciaga Everyday Logo Tote Bag. This is similar to the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, however, this one does have a recessed zip closure. It comes in black and this gray color that I really like, and it retails for $1,450. It's actually pretty wide at 20 inches across, and it is 12 inches high. The double handles have a 10 inch drop. And of course, this bag is also made of leather. Next, I wanna talk about Givenchy. This is the Wing Logo Leather Shopper. This version here with the broken glass mirror on the front of it and the logo retails on my Teresa for $1,350. It is made of calf leather with leather lining. It measures 14 inches across and 12 inches high. I'm gonna throw up another version of a wing shopping tote on the screen. This one retails for $1,590 at Bergdorf Goodman. I love the embossed croc detail and the cool silver color. It is embossed leather. This bag also includes a zip pouch, but I do not think it is easily removable. So I wanna show you one of my personal bags here. This is my Givenchy tote bag. It is one of my favorites. I've used this a ton. It's actually pretty beat up. You can see from the handles there. This was like my workhorse bag. Carry everything for work, etc. I love Givenchy totes because I think that they usually have a lot of unique graphics or something interesting. I specifically loved this one because it was just a conversation starter. People would come up to me all the time and ask about this and say that they loved it. And I just thought it was a really great never full alternative. This bag is from, let me find the date code. This bag is from 2013. I just checked the date code and I still love it. It was not made of leather. It is made of like this poly material, but that made it even better because I carry this thing in the rain without any concern. It does have some leather details like this part, but still I was able to beat this up a little and not feel bad about it, which I do love that the Neverfull is made of canvas and that is a benefit as well. But when you add the Vaquetta leather to that, this is more delicate and you do have to be more careful with the Vaquetta leather trim in the rain. So that is something to keep in mind. While this is a very durable material. The trim still does need to be protected and taken care of. This bag I just threw around and did whatever I wanted with it and it shows in the wear but honestly it served its purpose and I got good use out of it. I wasn't buying this bag to like sell it as a collector's piece down the line. This bag got a lot of love and I'm super happy that I bought it. This bag got a ton of cost per wear. So yeah, I think Givenchy often has fun, fresh styles with cool graphics that add a little more interest to the bags and I think that that's a great option. One other Givenchy style that I would mention that was a little more of a north-south tote so it didn't make the full list is the Antigonia Soft Large Leather Tote. This is a newer style designed by Matthew Williams and it has that new piece of signature hardware on it that is really cool as well as the straps on the outside that kind of go all the way down to the bottom. I thought this was really unique. It does retail for 
$1,490, which is kind of a lot, but it is leather and it measures 14.5 inches wide and 14 inches high. So it's pretty much a square. It's only slightly wider than it is tall. It does have a good amount of handle drop though so that it can fit comfortably under your shoulder. And I just think the styling is really cool with that hardware buckle. It looks edgy and cool and different, but yeah, it's pretty expensive. Next, let's talk about Gucci. The Ophidia Medium Gigi Toe is super cute. It has the classic Gigi monogram with the red and green striping down the middle and shiny gold hardware. This bag retails for $1,350 and it is also in a canvas material similar to the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, so it, that makes it a little more durable. This bag measures 15 inches across and 11 inches high and it has a magnetic snap closure and an internal zip pocket. That size is right in between the Louis Vuitton MM and GM style. This bag features the beige ebony GG Supreme printed canvas, which is a very classic to the brand. I love the heritage vintage look to this piece. It also comes in a few different color options, a black and then this like denim blue option as well. But I think this GG Supreme classic colorway is my favorite. It just has that vintage -y heritage look that I'm really into right now. Next on my list is Valentino. This really cute rock stud medium leather tote. This bag is completely made out of leather. It's very similar to some of the other basic leather totes we've seen. However, it does have the addition of the cool, edgy rock stud hardware. This bag retails for $1,345 currently on my Teresa. It's also available in other color options. It measures 17.5 inches across and 11 inches high. There is an interior zip pocket and no pouch. So this bag is slightly bigger than the Neverfull GM. I will admit that I am slightly over the whole rock stud thing and if you are as well, I think there is one other great option from Valentino that is newer but it is a little bit pricey at $2,850. This Roman stud medium leather tote features the enlarged rock studs all around the line of the bag which is much more my style a little more gaudy a little more in your face however it does come with a price it is very similar in size though quite big at 21 inches across and 10.5 inches high the annoying part though is that it does have less handle drop so they look quite a bit shorter and they might be a little less comfortable on the shoulder next on the list is Prada this is another non leather style the classic nylon tote retails for $1,000 $1,320. It measures just under 14 inches wide and around 11 and a half inches high. It has Safiano leather handles and a pocket with magnetic closure. And of course it has the classic Prada branding of the enamel triangle logo right in the center of the bag. This bag is the second on the list to include a zipper closure. Honestly, it is pretty pricey at that $1,320 for a nylon bag, but it is durable. It could be a another great diaper bag option because I know a lot of people do use the Neverfull as a diaper bag. Another bag that I liked from Prada a lot better but it is a little more pricey at $1,590 is this nylon tote with embroidered logo. I love that the embroidered logo is black on a black nylon and it just blends in but the logo is also very elegant looking. I think this is a great option to not be the same as the triangle Prada logo we're all used to seeing. This bag is exactly the same size as the last one and it also features a zipper closure and leather handles. I personally think the embroidered logo on the front is super elegant but still understated because it is black embroidery on a black nylon bag so it's just a touch of branding and I think it's a really cute bag. So last on the list the most affordable of all of the options is this Saint Laurent option. It is the shopping bag in supple leather. There are a ton of color options. It is very slouchy and unstructured. It comes with very minimal branding top center, just like a lot of the 
other leather totes we've looked at and it measures 14.5 inches across and 11 inches high. This bag also does include a removable zip pouch like the Neverfull. So I did not find any Neverfull similar options from Fendi, Chanel, Chloe, or Dior. I know you guys are thinking what about the Dior book tote but I consider that a very different tote. It has a much shorter handle, it is much boxier, you know a big oversized box tote. I could do a separate version on all the variations of that but that is why I didn't include it in this video. If you are looking for options under a thousand dollars I will throw a few up on the screen. I have four or five. There is the off-white diagonal binder leather shopper. This retails for $858. It is 17.5 inches across and 10 inches high. Mansur Gabrielle has two really great options. I personally am loving this tie-dye oversized tote. Super cute, $795. There is also a basic leather version for $615. And then of course the MCM shopper tote retails for $650. This also comes with the removable pouch similar to the Neverfull. The MCM Liz shopper tote is 14.2 inches across and 11 inches high. And last but not least, the Madewell transport tote is a super popular unstructured leather shopping tote option. This retails for $168. If you are looking for a basic leather tote and you do not care about brand names, this is the bag for you. It measures 14 inches across and 13 and three quarters inches high. It is much more square, not a ton wider than it is tall, but this will definitely do the trick if you're not looking to break the bank on a basic leather tote. Okay guys, that is all the totes on my list. The last thing I wanna leave you with when you're considering other designers is just to take a look at resale value if that is something that's important to you. The two bags that hold their value the most on this list I would definitely say are the Louis Vuitton Neverfull and the Goyard Totes. So that may be something you want to take into consideration, especially if you're going to be using this bag every day. And if you are, I would still suggest that you try your best to take very good care of it. If you know this is something you're going to be using and abusing, you might want to spend a little less money or you might want to look at something that is in a very durable material. When it comes to Louis Vuitton Neverfulls, I've said this and I'll say it again, I don't like having the same bags as everyone else and I know this is a common bag. So I personally love getting the special editions or the unique versions of this bag and that being said they may set you back a little more money but again I think that they're worth it especially if you pick the right ones they may increase in value even more over time that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this content please go ahead and give it a thumbs up comment down below what your favorite totes were from this video and which ones you think are not worth the money if you love handbags fashion and luxury please consider checking out some of my other videos and go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more interesting handbag content. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.